At least it's turning into a beautiful day. Catherine Zeta-Jones is a British actress who has built a brilliant career in Hollywood and starred in almost 50 films. She has an Oscar and Golden Globe nomination to her credit. She was also awarded the Order of the British Empire for her work in cinema from the hands of Charles himself. Our today's video is dedicated to this gorgeous and strong woman. How Catherine Zeta-Jones Lives and How Much She Earns Catherine Zeta-Jones was born in Wales on September 25, 1969. The prefix Zeta is not part of her surname. It was originally her second name, given in honor of her maternal grandmother. According to family legend, the mother of that grandmother arrived in the UK from Ireland on a ship called Zeta and named her daughter after it. When the girl started her acting career, she decided to include her middle name in her stage name in order to stand out from other Catherine Jones. Her father, David James Jones, a Welsh descendant, worked in a bakery as a baker and a cashier to feed his large family. Aside from little Catherine, they had two sons. The family was poor. They lived in a low-income neighborhood in the coastal Welsh town of Swansea. Mother Patricia was a sempstress who helped them make ends meet. This lasted until the 80s when the family suddenly became wealthy. The parents bought a lottery ticket, which brought them 100,000 pounds, which allowed them to not only buy their own pastry shop and a decent house in a good area of Swansea, but also to pay for a dance studio for their daughter, which she dreamed of. It should be noted that no one in the family except Catherine was interested in art. At a very young age, she was on the brink of death because of illness. That's why she was raised like a princess surrounded by attention. By the way, the little scar on her neck was left as a result of the tracheal surgery that saved her life. However, the girl didn't grow up spoiled, striking others with her discipline. At the age of four, Catherine danced on holidays and sang in the choir at the local church, where everyone who saw her predicted a great acting future for her. From the age of seven, she began to engage in choreography with full dedication, making herself a strict schedule for the whole week. Three years later, Jones was already shining on the stage of the City Theatre, and after another four years, she managed to pass the casting for the production of The Pajama Game. This was her first serious role. After the tour was over, the young actress left school without obtaining O-levels and went to London. There, she stormed all kinds of castings, not missing a single opportunity to make it to the big screen. During this period, she had a passionate relationship with the famous TV presenter John Leslie. Catherine was so carried away by the charming Scotsman that she planned to spend her whole life with him. Alas, his personality turned out to be too difficult. The future star suffered from fits of jealousy from her partner, which eventually led to a breakup. As for her acting, at first Catherine's catch was small. She was chosen only as the second understudy to the lead actress of the musical 42nd Street. The year 1990 was more successful for her as she was cast for the role of Scheherazade in the film 1001 Nights. The young, talented beauty was immediately noticed, and a year later she got a role in the series The Darling Buds of May. Critics and British viewers were delighted, and very soon, Catherine headed off to conquer Hollywood. She immediately had a chance to play in the episode of George Lucas's television series, The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, which boosted her career in Hollywood. Legend has it that her role of dancer Maya impressed Steven Spielberg so much that he advised to invite her to the role of Zorro's beloved. According to another story, Spielberg noticed the actress while watching the miniseries Titanic, which was released in 1996. In the meantime, Catherine starred in a number of TV movies, including Christopher Columbus, The Discovery, Splitting Heirs, The Return of the Native, and Catherine the Great, as well as the miniseries The Cinder Path. They were followed by the comedy drama Blue Juice and the superhero movie The Phantom, though they were not very popular with the audience. 
During the same period, the actress was offered to play the role of Trinity in the cult classic movie The Matrix, but she refused. In the mid-90s, the girl was in a relationship with the Scottish actor Angus McBodian. They were even engaged, but they broke up before the wedding. In 1998, the fast-paced action film The Mask of Zorro stormed onto the screens. The shooting was also extremely intense and was accompanied by a lot of curious details and events. The role of Elena could go to Penelope Cruz, Swedish actress Isabella Skorupko, or passionate singer Shakira. But it was Catherine who got lucky. In order to fit into the role perfectly, the actress, as she usually does, eagerly began to learn disciplines useful for the filming – horse riding, fencing, dancing, Spanish. She was particularly successful in learning the latter. So much so that people who didn't know her biography could swear that she was a real Spaniard. The film was a resounding success, earning $250 million at the box office with a budget of $95 million, and also scored two Oscar and Golden Globe nominations. Would you care to try something more uh, robust, or do you feel unequal to the task? No, on the contrary, Don Alejandro. I think only of your distaste for perspiration. <laughs> In the same year, another small event happened that affected the rest of Zeta Jones' life. The actress made an unforgettable impression on the Hollywood titan Michael Douglas, so much so that he immediately wanted her to become the mother of his children. So, as soon as he could, he started looking for a way to meet her. The first conversation happened during a festival in France and did not impress the actress. The experienced seducer Douglas played his trump cards right away, dumping his plans on her. But Catherine just laughed it off. But the actor had no plans to give up. He showered the girl with gifts, flowers, and she didn't even notice how she began to talk to him for hours on the phone and also to dream of watching movies with him and cooking delicious dinners. From that moment on, persistent courtship turned into a traditional relationship. In 1999, Catherine was featured in the films The Haunting and Entrapment. The latter is called one of the best crime films. It made a real splash in the industry. The main male role of an imposing thief was played by Sean Connery. Zeta Jones kept up with her legendary partner and gave her best on the set. So, she performed a dangerous stunt, jumping from a ceiling beam onto a table while doing a backflip. The film earned $212 million at the box office with a relatively small budget and was very popular with the audience. Fans especially note the scene of Catherine passing through a grid of laser beams in which she shows the wonders of plasticity and grace. Also noteworthy are the shots when Connery's character comes to interrogate Catherine. She was lying under just a white sheet, and at this moment she is actually completely naked. I called you at 4.30 this morning. I was home in bed. You didn't pick up. I didn't want to pick up. You had company. He came in the window. How romantic. I think that's how he got in. The year 2000 was marked by a landmark event for Catherine and Michael, who learned that they would become parents. On New Year's Eve 2000, he proposed to his beloved and presented an antique ring worth $1 million. However, the purest 10-carat diamond and Michael's passionate desire to marry his beloved as soon as possible were somewhat overshadowed by the fact that the actor was still legally married. To solve this problem, the groom needed to give his ex a huge payoff of $45 million, and according to other sources, $60 million. In August, the Douglas couple had a son, whom they named Dylan. And in November of the same year, they had a luxurious wedding worth $1.5 million. The celebration took place at the famous Plaza Hotel in New York, and the bride's dress alone cost $250,000. The star's guests, including Tom Hanks, Brad Pitt, Sharon Stone, Steven Spielberg, Jennifer Aniston had fun and congratulated the newlyweds. Since Catherine and Michael understood the absurdity of trying to hide from the press on such a day, they pulled a trick and sold the rights to cover the event to the British magazine OK. The journalists were very interested in the couple, largely because of the large age difference. A fun fact is that the couple were born on the same day with a difference of 25 years. Few people believe that something could come out of this relationship, but as life has shown, the marriage of two stars turned out to be extremely strong, although they had to go through a lot.
Catherine herself calls the secrets of a successful marriage a sense of humor and respect. Although apparently the marriage contract, which the actress insisted on before answering the cherished yes, played a significant role. According to its terms, in case of infidelity, Michael is obliged to pay his wife a decent amount for each year of living together. The exact figure is unknown, but the range is between 1 million and 3 million. In 2000, the musical drama High Fidelity and the thriller Traffic were released, in which the actress starred while pregnant with her son. For this work, Catherine received a fee of 3 million and a Golden Globe nomination. I'm European. I say that to my to my doctor. I'm European. I'm allowed to drink red wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my doctor said it was fine when I was pregnant. A glass a week. After a my of amnio. Week. After mm -hmm. my amnio, he said, okay, now you can go and have a glass of red wine. Mm -hmm. You're like, I, I need had it. two. <laughs> in 2001, Zeta Jones appeared in the movie America's Sweethearts. By that time, Catherine's revenue was growing rapidly and amounted to $5 million. But the real triumph for Catherine was the adaptation of the Broadway musical Chicago. It should be noted that the plot of the drama is based on real events that took place in the U.S. in the early 20th century. The first attempt at a film adaptation was made by Miramax back in 1994, and before that, the rights of the production were bought by director Bob Fosse. According to his idea, the main roles were to be played by Lisa Minnelli, Golden Hawn, and Frank Sinatra. But due to the death of Foss, the project was abandoned. The director of the 2002 film, Rob Marshall, considered Charlize Theron, Madonna, Angelina Jolie, and Britney Spears for the leading female roles. And that's not the whole list. When it came to Zeta Jones, she was immediately offered the role of Roxy Hart, but the actress wanted to play Velma Kelly. She liked the song All That Jazz so much that she was happy to sacrifice both the main role and her gorgeous curls, which she cut to a neat bob with perfectly straight bangs. She did it on purpose so that the long hair falling over her face would not allow the audience to doubt that she performs all the dance routines in the film on her own. Then, by the way, the actress said that working in a musical was almost as painful and exciting at the same time as having a baby. No, 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 I, I dance in the chorus. Oh, well, that was before I met my husband Amos. Look, honey, you want some advice? Here it is, direct from me to you. Keep your paws off my underwear, okay? Her Velma Kelly was loved not only by ordinary viewers, but also by professionals. For the role, the actress received a fee of $8 million, a nomination for a Golden Globe Award, and was also awarded an Oscar. The beauty arrived at the ceremony in a gorgeous black dress that did not conceal her rounded belly. The ceremony took place on the eve of her second childbirth. In 2003, the couple had a daughter, Karis Zedman. In the same year, two movies starring Zeta Jones appeared on the screens at once. These are the animated film Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, in which she voiced one of the main characters and the romantic comedy Intolerable Cruelty. 2004 brought her work on the memorable films The Terminal and Ocean's 12. The French police think he's better than Lamarck. Well, he is French. Let me give you some advice. Find out how you offended him. Apologize. Beg for mercy. The following year, a sequel to the film about the dashing vigilante was released. Catherine received $10 million for The Legend of Zorro. But all in all, the film made a strange impression. It received negative reviews, although it earned $142 million at the box office. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe I fell for it. Husband promises to quit. Gullible wife believes him. How could I be so stupid? In 2007, two more films were released. The supernatural romance film Death Defying Acts and the romantic comedy drama No Reservations. In fact, this was a remake of the German film Mostly Martha, which was reworked by the not-too-famous director Scott Hicks. But alas, it was not a masterpiece. Although the actress tried very hard and even worked incognito as a waitress in an Italian restaurant where visitors marveled at the resemblance of the employee to the celebrity. Nick is an expert. I know nothing about him. I had no idea he what me so great he was a sous chef at Ultraviso. Italian? You bring a yes. sous chef from an Italian restaurant and I'm the one in therapy? 
This was followed by another obscure film, The Rebound, which was shot in New York, Istanbul, and Paris. The hard work in childbirth left a mark on the actress, and soon Catherine began to show symptoms of bipolar affective disorder. This disorder is described by alternating phases of heightened activity and depression and significantly impairs one's life. Her star spouse was beginning to grow weary of this state of affairs, but then, like a thunderbolt from a clear sky, the news of his own illness came. In 2010, doctors diagnosed Michael with a terrible illness, laryngeal cancer. All this happened while Douglas's first son, Cameron, was arrested, charged with drug trafficking, and sentenced to five years in prison. Here, Catherine immediately switched and devoted all her energy to help her beloved spouse. A year later, Michael Douglas publicly announced that he had defeated cancer and returned to filming. Catherine, too, plunged into the familiar depths of cinema. In two years, she managed to appear in six films, Lay the Favorite, Rock of Ages, Playing for Keeps, Broken City, Side Effects, and Red 2. <sighs> How are things? Y yeah. Frank, how are things? Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> this is Katya. Yeah, hi. I need to speak to you. And at that moment, the actress's illness re-emerged in her and Michael's life with renewed vigor. This time, Douglas lost his nerve. He said that because of the depression that his wife was prone to, it was impossible to live with her, after which the couple announced their separation and the beginning of the divorce process. Michael also hinted that his wife was addicted to hard liquor because of her condition. However, three months later, the couple reunited. As reported, Zeta Jones underwent a course of intensive therapy, and she did get better. She resumed her acting career and appeared in the series Queen America, Feud, and Prodigal Son, as well as the films Dad's Army and Cocaine Godmother. In 2022, Catherine hit a new moment of stardom. In the Netflix series Wednesday, which became a worldwide hit, the actress played the role of Morticia Adams, the mother of an unusual and daring girl protagonist. What is this, a kidnapping? Would you like that? Because I think I'm up to it. <laughs> you do move me. I don't know why, but you do move me. In unusual places. Fans and critics who initially doubted this casting decision in the end agree that the actress's performance is worthy of praise. The duet of Catherine and the Puerto Rican actor Luis Guzman, who played her husband in the series, was particularly delightful. Despite a significant break in work and the troubles, Catherine has remained in good shape. Now, viewers can see her in the Disney series National Treasure Edge of History. It should be noted that the performance of the actress has always been generously paid. Now, Catherine Zeta-Jones, once a poor girl from the outskirts of Swansea, is a very rich lady. Her fortune is estimated at $150 million, and it's not just income from filming. It is reported that one second of the actress's advertising time costs about 4,000 euros. Over the years, she starred in advertisements for Elizabeth Arden Cosmetics, the Visa payment system, and Alfa Romeo Cars. A two-year contract with the mobile operator T-Mobile brought the actress 20 million, and in 2019, she was seen in a Fendi commercial where she starred with her daughter. A couple of years ago, Zeta Jones launched her own line of shoes in collaboration with the Butterfly Twist brand, known for its eco-friendly approach to production. In addition to the shoe collection, Catherine produces makeup, sportswear, and household goods under her own brand, Casa Zeta Jones. Over the years of marriage, Zeta Jones and Douglas have accumulated a high-end real estate portfolio. The star couple has a spacious apartment in New York with a view of Central Park, which they recently decided to sell. At first, the price was set at $21.5 million, but at the beginning of 2022, the couple decided to lower it to $19.5 million. Potential buyers will get a luxury penthouse with four bedrooms, a spacious living room, and a dressing room made in classic style. Apparently, in 2019, the family was going to rotate the property. They sold 12 acres of land in Westchester County, New York, which they bought in 2015 for $11 million, and managed to double the price. In the same year, they purchased a house in the same state worth $4.5 million. 
Also in 2019, an English-style villa in Bermuda worth $10.6 million was put up for sale, but in the end, the sale didn't take place, and the lot was withdrawn from auction. Catherine and Michael spent a lot of time in the house after the wedding, so their children didn't even suspect at first that they were growing up in a family of Hollywood celebrities. The couple has a Snow White villa hidden in lush greenery in Spanish Majorca, which in the 19th century attracted the European nobility. The 10-bedroom house is decorated with great love, its design is tasteful and discreetly luxurious. Many of the interior decorations and furniture were chosen directly by the owners. The estate is quite large, totaling about 10,000 square feet. There is a formal dining room, several living rooms decorated with antiques, which Douglas is very passionate about. The estimated cost of this property is $33 million, but since Michael's ex-wife remains the co-owner of the property, it cannot be sold. The Hollywood Diva owns a black Lexus SUV worth $130,000, which she drives in everyday life. Douglas and Zeta Jones were once spotted driving around Wales in a used Jaguar. As it turned out later, the couple arrived in the actress's hometown to participate in a golf competition. Catherine Zeta-Jones is a woman who impresses not only with her beauty, but also with her stunning determination. No matter what happens, she does not give up and looks into the face of any life circumstances, boldly challenging them. She is not afraid of experiments or difficult tasks. The musical Cleo will be released soon, in which the actress will play the fatal Egyptian queen Cleopatra. What movie with this actress do you like the most? Thank you. I had a wonderful time. Unfortunate that it has to end. How Vin Diesel lives and how he spends his millions. Vin Diesel, born as Mark Vincent Sinclair, was born on July 18, 1967 in Alameda County, California, along with his twin brother Paul. Funnily enough, the twins are completely different in appearance and character. Until the age of three, the boys were raised only by their mother, Delora, who was a psychiatrist and was fond of astrology. Mark and Paul have never seen their father. The actor's nationality still remains a mystery. Vin has reportedly said that he's of ambiguous ethnicity. His mother has English, German, and Scottish roots, and his biological father most definitely belonged to another race, possibly also mixed. In 1970, Mark and Paul's mother married acting teacher and theater director Irvin Vincent and moved with her sons to live with him in New York. Soon they had two more children, Tim and Samantha. Irwin often took his children to theater performances and movie premieres. It was Diesel's stepfather, Irwin, who significantly influenced the boy's character and his desire for acting. Mark first appeared on stage at the age of seven in a very interesting way. Together with several other boys, he decided to sneak into one of the local theaters to play with the props. At that moment, actors were rehearsing a performance on stage. The boys were noticed by the production director, and as a punishment, they were forced to act out some of the lines. Oddly enough, Sinclair did the best among them, so it was he who got a tempting offer from the director, $20 for each performance. Soon enough, his first performance in children's play Dinosaur Door took place. Vin's performance was so brilliant that from that moment on, he decided to become an actor. Up until the age of 17, Mark performed on the theater stage, improving his skills. Despite the theatrical success, his personal life was not quite successful. Today's heartthrob at one point was only met by mockery and laughter from women. As a teenager, he was tall and thin, for which he received the nickname Worm. Embarrassed by his wimpy physique, the future actor began to play sports and regularly work out. After a few years, the guy turned into a real jock with visible muscles. After graduating high school, he decided that the theater wouldn't bring him a lot of money. So being a rather large and jacked up guy, Vincent got a job as a bouncer at the nightclub tunnel in Manhattan. That's when he came up with the alias Vin Diesel and started shaving his head bald. At the same time, Vin Diesel entered Hunter College, where he studied English and classical literature, and in his spare time he tried to write scripts. In 1987, he dropped out of college, left his annoying job at the club, and moved from his home in New York to Los Angeles with dreams of becoming a movie star. However, Hollywood did not accept him with open arms, and he had to get a job as a salesman in a tech store. During his first year, Vin Diesel proved himself well and managed to earn good money. Every day, he worked hard for 18 hours a day. But the actor knew that a salesman and a movie star aren't quite the same thing, so he went back to New York. Vin Diesel's film debut took place in 1990 in Penny Marshall's film Awakenings, 
However, the role was so insignificant that he didn't even appear in the credits. Seeing her son struggling, his mother tried to cheer him up and gave him a book by Rick Schmidt, feature filmmaking at used car prices, hinting that he can take his career into his own hands. Inspired by the book, Diesel took up writing his own scripts. In 1994, the actor made a short film, Multifacial, in which he took the main role for himself and even wrote music for it himself. Yo, I can't wait till I do enough real work, real acting work, but I don't have to sweat commercials, you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna see like Pacino doing potato chips here, or Denzel doing donuts. He spent only $3,000 to produce a 20 minute film. The picture was awarded a screening in Kane, although it did not receive significant awards. Nevertheless, it was his first success. After that, Vin Diesel returned to Los Angeles, where he resumed working as a tech salesman and saving money. He was going to use the money to make the movie Strays. After eight months of hard work, the actor started filming the movie, where he would play the main role. Thanks to this film, the young actor was noticed by the famous director Steven Spielberg, who offered him a role in his film Saving Private Ryan with Tom Hanks and Matt Damon. It was Diesel's first work in a big movie, which brought him popularity and $100,000. Later this film received five Oscars and Diesel himself, along with his colleagues on the set, were nominated for the Screen Actors Guild of America Award in the category Best Ensemble. In 1999, Vin voiced the main character in the cartoon The Iron Giant and also starred in the film Pitch Black, where he played the main role of the criminal Riddick. All you people are so scared of me. Most days I take that as a compliment. But it ain't me you gotta worry about now. This film marked the beginning of the famous series The Chronicles of Riddick and brought the actor his long-awaited fame. Although the filming was not easy for Diesel, while performing a trick, he injured his shoulder and his eye because of the special contact lenses that made his eyes shine in the dark. From that moment on, films with the actor started coming out one after another. In the early 2000s, viewers could see Vin Diesel in such films as Boiler Room, Into Pitch Black, and Knockaround Guys. In the last one, he played the role of Taylor Reese, a friend of the son of an influential mafia boss of Brooklyn. The milk guy's getting paid, the potato chip guy's getting paid, the beer guy's getting paid, every fucking body's getting paid, and you look through me, you fuck! 2001 was one of the most successful years in the actor's life. After playing one of the main roles together with Paul Walker in the crime thriller The Fast and the Furious by Rob Cohen, Vin Diesel became the public's favorite, and the character Dominic Toretto became his best role according to the audience. Then it's over. I didn't call the police, but don't punch me! Put the gun down! I swear to God! You are the cop! You're a cop! Brian, I gotta find Jesse before they do. I'm all the kids got. I'll call in the plates. The actor's payout for this film was $2 million. The acting duo received a high award, the MTV Movie Award. But nevertheless, Diesel did not participate in the next film, Too Fast, Too Furious, because he could not agree with the producers on the fee amount. The actor requested more than $20 million for the film. During the filming of Fast and Furious, Vince started an affair with actress Michelle Rodriguez, who played his partner in the movie. After a few months of dating, the couple broke up. According to rumors, Michelle initiated the breakup, thinking that she and Vin were too different. However, the ex-lovers remained good friends. The following year, the audience watched the adventure thriller Triple X with Vin Diesel, in which he performed most of the stunts himself without using a stuntman. Sit down, Mr. Cage. You know what? My friends call me X. So, X, what exactly are you wanting? Ferraris, high-end pasta rockets. The actor admitted later he had never ridden motorcycles before. During the three-month preparation for the film, he was coached by bikers who were among the best motocross athletes in the world. By the way, all the tattoos that Vin Diesel's character has in the movie were fake. For this work, the actor received an MTV Movie Award nomination in the Best Actor category and earned $10 million. Thanks to this film, Vin Diesel met Czech model Paula Harpkova who played a cameo role in it. But this relationship did not last just like his previous ones. In 2003, the action movie A Man Apart was released in which Diesel played the main role and also acted as an executive producer. Did you kill my 
wife. Answer me, motherfucker. Answer the fucking question! The film brought him $2.5 million. The next film in which the actor starred in was an installment from the series The Chronicles of Riddick. Remember that favorite game of yours? Who's the better killer? Let's play. Vin Diesel's fee was $11.5 million, despite the fact that the film didn't gather as much at the box office. And the actor received a Golden Raspberry nomination for the worst male role in 2005 for that movie. An animated film and a computer game were soon created based on this film, and Diesel voiced his character in them. At the same time, Vin Diesel starred in the comedy family thriller, The Pacifier. Kids, it's safe. Who was that? What did they want? What happened? Please don't leave us, Shane. What do they want? They were after the program that your father invented. On the set, he had to collaborate with five children actors in once, and he did it flawlessly. By the way, Vin enjoyed acting with his nine-month-old partner so much that he was ready to work on set even on the weekends. Diesel's new comedic role was well received by the audience, who was used to seeing him only in action films, and as such, the actor starred in the film Find Me Guilty in 2006. You don't run out the people that love you. Love you? He's your cousin. He puts four fucking bullets in you and he loves you? Yeah, he loves me. I love him. He's family. He's just a junkie. He doesn't know what he's doing. Live and let live. Speaking of which, how many times I gotta tell you? His image of Jackie Dinarskio was unusual for the viewers. Diesel gained 30 pounds and spent two hours a day in the makeup chair. Soon the third part of Fast and Furious was released, the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. But fans were upset to see Vin Diesel's character only in the scene at the very end. In 2007, the 40-year-old actor met 23-year-old Mexican model Paloma Jimenez they live together to this day, but still haven't made their relationship official. In one of his interviews, the actor said that marriage is just a formality. A year after they met, the couple had a daughter, Hanny O'Reilly. Funny enough, Diesel's ex-girlfriend Michelle Rodriguez became the godmother for the girl. Soon after, the actor was invited to take part in the filming of one of the following films, the Hitman thriller or the fantasy action movie Babylon AD. By choosing the latter option, Diesel miscalculated. The film never recouped its budget, which amounted to a grandiose sum of 70 million US dollars, and even the director himself later admitted that the film in general is not worth watching. However, the actor did not ignore his most stellar role of Dominic. In 2009, Diesel worked on the fourth part of Fast and Furious as an actor and producer. When I see flashing lights in my mirror, I don't stop. In the first movie, Walker and Diesel were allowed to perform many stunts since both were not considered celebrities at that time. But by the fourth movie, the actors became well known, the stunts became more difficult, and the studio forbade Walker and Diesel to risk their lives. A year later, Paloma and Vin had a son, Vincent Sinclair. It is known that the actor has another son, Isaiah, who is a little older than Hania. The name of his mother is unknown, and the boy spends a lot of time with his father and his family. In 2011, the fifth part of Fast and Furious came out and brought $15 million to the actor. Good race, O'Connor. Thanks, Don. In 2013, Vin Diesel starred in the thriller Riddick, the production of the film was in jeopardy when there was a delay in financing. As a result, Vin Diesel took over the financing of the film until the problem with the bank loan was resolved. According to the actor, he had to mortgage his house to take out a loan. In the same year, he voiced the main character in the animated film Riddick, Blindsided, and also starred in Fast and Furious 6, and Dwayne Johnson joined their team. Are we building the car? First car better be a Charger, Jack. You, you mean Skyline? <laughs> Like I said, he's a Toretto. At that time, filming of Fast and Furious 7 began, but in November the filming stopped due to the death of Paul Walker, and was resumed later in the spring of 2014. During this period, such film as The Last Witch Hunter and Guardians of the Galaxy were released. In the latter, Vin Diesel played the role of Groot. The actor participated in motion capture for the character, and also voiced him in several languages, including Russian. If you free us, I'll lead you to the buyer directly, and I'll split the profit between the three of us. I'm Groot. Four of us. Asleep for the danger, awake for the money, as per frickin' usual. 
In 2015, Vin Diesel and Paloma Jimenez had a second daughter, Pauline, who was named after the deceased Paul Walker, who was Vin's good friend. The long-awaited film Fast and Furious 7 was also released, which brought the actor a huge payout of $47 million. You miss the bullets. <laughs> yeah, that's messed up, huh? Brian, I've seen you jump from trains, dive from planes. Hell, I saw your courage the day I met you. On the set of the project Triple X, Return of Xander Cage in 2016, Vin Diesel met his film partner Nina Dobrev. A provocative photo shoot of the two celebrities later prompted fans to think they were having an affair. Later it turned out that the actors were just good friends. In addition to this film, there were also such films as Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which was well received by the audience. In 2016, Diesel earned $35 million and became the seventh highest paid actor of the year. The eighth part of Fast and Furious, which premiered in 2017, became famous among fans because of the conflict that broke out a week before the end of filming between Dwayne Johnson and Vin Diesel. The reason was that Diesel, as a producer, canceled some of the planned scenes with Johnson at the last minute. Yo cousin, sorry about your car. Yours was too slow for a Toretto anyway. You're in Paula? Are you serious? In 2017, Diesel earned $54.3 million, which made him the third highest paid actor of the year. And in the Forbes magazine rating, Vin Diesel took first place among actors whose films became the highest grossing. The total income of his movies, where he played the main role, amounted to $1.6 billion. Most of this amount falls on the fate of The Furious. The box office of the film totals $1.2 billion. In 2018, the actor again voiced his character Groot in the film's Avengers Infinity War and the Avengers Endgame, as well as in the animated film Ralph Breaks the Internet. In 2020, Diesel starred in the action movie Bloodshot, and a year later F9 was released, and John Cena also joined the cast. In December 2022, Avatar 2, a fantasy action movie, is planned to be released, in which Vin Diesel will play the main role. Now that a new film about the Guardians of the Galaxy is underway, Vin Diesel will reprise his role as Groot, and in the future we are waiting for the 10th part of the movie Fast and Furious series and the new action movie Fury. By the way, it is promised that the 10th Fast and Furious will put an end to this action-packed high-speed movie saga. His successful film career has made the actor one of the highest paid in Hollywood. In 2020, Vin Diesel's net worth amounted to $225 million. In the period from June 2019 to June 2020, Vin earned $55 million, approximately $20 million of which was made on the share from the film F9. The growing popularity of the actor in the cinema has given him the chance to make an impressive amount of money in advertising. For playing in a 30-second video, he receives $3 million. For example, the American car brand Dodge invited the famous actor to play the role of the brand's muscle car driver in a commercial. Such a partnership is not surprising, since Vin Diesel participated in the Fast and Furious, whose partner was Dodge. The actor also advertised the Yadier G5 scooter. After the release of this commercial, the Chinese company Yadier received a 90% increase in sales. At the beginning of his career, it was commercials, although for more modest fees, that became a significant part of his income. For example, back in 1994, Vin Diesel starred in a commercial for toys. Back in 2002, he created the company Tygun Studios and began producing his own game Wheelman, where the main character speaks in his voice. No one doubts that Vin Diesel is able not only to earn money, but also to spend it. It may seem trite, but the actor loves cars very much and has spent part of his gigantic fortune on several impressive cars that anyone would like to have. His collection includes Dodge Charger Daytona 1969, Dodge Charger RT 1970, Chevrolet Corvette Stingray Grand Sport 1963, Chevrolet Corvette 1970, Dodge Charger Tantrum 1970, Dodge Charger SRT 8 2011, Lincoln Hypersport and others. Interestingly, the actor also has his own auto trailer, which he uses during filming. In his huge double-decker van with an area of 1,100 square feet, the actor feels at home. The cost of such a luxury is $1.1 million. 
It is known that Vin Diesel owns a mansion in Los Angeles acquired back in 2001. Although the mansion does not differ in size and has a total area of only 1,500 square feet, it is located in the prestigious Hollywood Hills area. Inside the house, despite its modest size, it is very cozy. There is no extra empty space. Everything is very compact, convenient, and functional. In addition, the interior design of the premises varies from room to room. One has smooth painted walls and the other has brickwork or even an oven. The floor covering is the same, sometimes natural wood and elsewhere there is tile. The color palette also varies greatly, from pale light tones to brighter dark. Despite this, everything here looks organic and complete. To date, the actor has put this house up for sale and plans to sell it for $1.4 million. In 2014, he bought a mansion in Atlanta, Georgia for $3.3 million. It has seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, a kitchen, a spacious living room, an office, a cinema, a gym, a roof terrace, and a fully equipped guest house. The mansion is ideal for entertaining friends as well as hosting parties. In addition, the actor has another mansion in Los Angeles worth $5.3 million. Vin Diesel is a big fan of the Dominican Republic. They say the star owns a villa in the elite area of the Casa de Campo Resort. The actor flies over there at any opportunity he can. The Hollywood star also plans to invest in the construction of a film studio in the Dominican Republic. Vin Diesel loves to fly to the land of eternal summer for a vacation. In particular, the artist is fond of surfing and also does not miss the opportunity to visit Dominican restaurants. In addition, it was in this country that a number of scenes of the well-known movie series Fast and Furious were filmed. And what is your favorite movie, which Vin Diesel stars in? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.